Thank you all for tuning in. The following is a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hatch the Third, coming to you live from the Palatial Shalom Studios of Bald Spots Productions here in the beautiful city of Malden, Missouri. <gasps> I am joined today over a more than acceptable safe social distance by my guests, Glenda Benavides and Anthony Rosano. I hope I didn't butcher those names too bad. <laughs> How are you all doing today? Awesome, Bill. Doing Hanging good. In there. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Yeah, thanks hey. for having us on the show. Yeah, hey, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being willing to put up with these shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> um, now, I usually ask the same question of uh, of my guests first off. <clears throat> Pardon me. And that is, what are you reading? And uh, since I'm not, uh, I'm not too afraid to be sexist. Uh, ladies first, uh, Glenda, what are you reading? What am I? I'm reading a couple of different things. Um, cool. Oh, we're, now I feel dumb. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. Well, while we're waiting for Glenda to come back, uh, Anthony, what are you reading? Well, that's uh, this. I'm a CPA, so this time right. of year, I'm kind of reading the tax code. <laughs> <laughs> all the all, all the cha all the changes to the tax code and the things that oh, we have no. to do moving forward, and you know, because we get buried with uh, with with law changes every year and how that affects yep. our clients and. And so kind of uh, that's that's where my nose is buried right now. Okay. Well, I, I can understand that. My my nose is buried in uh, in textbooks uh, as I'm I've gone back to school to get my uh, my master's degree. I'm reading uh, this one autopsy of a deceased church and uh, and uh, the early church and a few others. Uh, I'm I'm taking a course in church history. And uh, it, it's kind of well, interesting, interesting. Um, but not as interesting as the leadership yeah. one that is going to be that I'm going to be taking in the second half of this term. But uh, um, but yeah, um, no, I I feel very I feel extra honored that a CPA would take time out of the tax season business <laughs> to uh, to come on to my little show. So, but uh, um, well, okay, Glenda, of course, what are you I, no, listen, oh. that's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. Cool. The Once and the I'm Future a, I'm, I'm live Witches. TV. Okay. The Once and Future Witches. Um, I literally just started it, so I couldn't tell you what it's about. But um, ah. it, it it's pretty compelling. And then this is a really good friend of mine's, his book. Okay. Um, Cannery he's Row. He's a magician. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cannery Row here in Monterey, California. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm familiar. And it's, okay. Um, there is one of the oldest um magic shops and it's in cannery row it's okay. like in california it's crazy huh. and um and anyway he's he's not necessarily part owner but he's um been doing uh his show there and he's an amazing magician nice and it's called seance cannery row um the inspiration behind the veil and it's chris heron is his name and it's pretty okay. neat i mean it just goes into um basically all the things that it you know saying like this is this is not real right you know this is magic <laughs> so anyway it's, it's i just i've just started these so it's pretty pretty fun okay. and um it's lovely to support my my friends yes absolutely yeah my uh my little brother uh served in the army there or in the army yeah in the mm -hmm. army there at uh, uh at the presidio yeah and uh, uh um yeah i think so yeah yeah and uh um yeah and so uh um so i got a little familiar with the area and uh really really beautiful up there but uh um but yeah um yeah i i have an interest in uh in uh in magic uh, as well uh um i love houdini's story and uh um, yeah you know, and uh, um, I, I actually got into it because it was a, uh, I was trying to be a professional photographer. And uh, so I was learning about all these photographic techniques and then seeing what oh. people were trying to pass off as ghost pictures. And I'm like, 
yeah, but I know how to do that. <laughs> and so it kind of got me interested right. in, in like, why are people believing this when it's so easy to fake it? You know? Right. And have you uh, seen yeah. any of the, like the 1800s, like some of the pictures from the 1800s mm -hmm. where they're, they say, oh, this is plasma or whatever. And you're like, no, that looks like gauze. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gauze. <laughs> yeah. Obvious. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, That's and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I particularly like the double exposure uh, pictures where you have the slight exposure of somebody, uh, you know, standing behind the person who's interested yeah. in the spiritualism, and uh, um, yeah, and then uh, um, I also uh, um, there are there are actually real photos of the dead, though, and uh, found yeah, one. Um, yes. My uh, my grandmother had one of her older brother um he was an infant and had passed away and uh, yeah, and there was a picture in her collection of him uh that yeah, creepy mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, now it's kind of creepy but i, I kind of understand because it was so hard yeah. to take a photo back then that uh, um that that was the only time somebody would stay still long enough to uh, <laughs> to take correct. a picture <laughs> so yeah, it's like okay, <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, um, yeah. I really creeped a friend of mine out. We were looking through the photo through my grandmother's photo album and came across that one. And I'm like, oh look, it's my it's my great uncle. And she's like, oh wow, well whatever happened to him? Oh no, that was the end of him. <laughs> that was the last picture yeah. ever taken. Yeah, the but, beginning, uh, the beginning uh, and the end. Yes, um, the beginning and the yeah. end. It's well, sad, I sad mean, story, I find but... it I find it fascinating because if you really look at the way that time has progressed and technology has progressed, if if we would just take the technology that we have now and bring it back to the 1800s, they would think that we were practicing magic. We were able to throw yeah, our absolutely. voices around the world in a split second. We're able to oh, send yeah. images at places. And, mm -hmm. you know, I find it very interesting that it is the human spirit that really cultivates this energy that does things that are unimaginable in previous generations. I mean, mm -hmm. the way that we can get to China in a, in a, in a day today, that would be like in a year, in a hundred years from now, being able to transport our, our bodies from one place to another momentarily uh, from here to Europe, uh, the same way our voices go. So yeah. the telling of, of whether or not you call it magic or spiritualism or the universe or God or yeah. innovation is just, uh, it's just amazing that the human spirit and the human mind work in that way that we can uh, manifest these changes in the world and they could take place. I, I find that fascinating and unique. Yeah. Yeah. And there's going to be stuff uh, going on that we can't even imagine right now and, and vice yeah. versa. Um, you know, you look at, uh, you look at some pictures, um, people, uh, people saying, Oh, look at that painting. That woman in the painting is holding a cell phone. And it's like, no, that's a 200 year old painting. It wasn't a cell phone. And, uh, and going through, I was watching a show that investigates such things and they're like, no, it's that at the time, something that was popular for people to do was to carry around these little notebooks. And, uh, and yeah. she was reading her note, her little notebook and, uh, yeah. um, you know, and thinking that in a hundred years, like you said, Anthony, um, you know, technology will be so different. People look back to things that we were doing and thinking, what is that? You know, what is, what is that thing they're <laughs> holding in their hands? That's uh, what's a cell phone. You know, uh, we yeah. communicate using well, I think, I this. Think, <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be exponential and I think it'll be not 100 years. I think it'll be like within the next 10 to 20 years. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have a whole different way of communicating sure. and connecting and especially with Neuralink and all this other stuff that's mm -hmm. happening, you know, and all the technologies that we don't know, do not know anything about. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, well, it'll be right. fascinating. And and, and we talk about things, um, I noticed that at the beginning of the conversation, you said, Bill, that you were studying uh, the early church. And mm -hmm. and we talk about things like the life and times of Jesus Christ and, and the idea of the resurrection after the death. Okay, three days to rise again. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it like this. What if, what if Christ was just so far advanced 
that he would that things were happening in his life that will be routine a hundred years from now. So the notion of rising after you died three three days from now is un, it's incomprehensible to us. But right. what if there is such a way that the spirit works that only he understood that then, hmm. but then humanity catches up to it at some point in the future and it goes, whoa. Because if you really look inside the scripture, Christ says to Peter, have a little bit of faith and you'll be able to walk on water too. He yeah. also says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, he doesn't say that these gifts that he had were limited to him. He said that right. they could have been inspired through the father. So what happens if innovation and people change and manifest in, in, in such a way that, that we realize that all that he said 2000 years ago was actually possible. We just didn't understand it. Well, I, I think that's why people uh, um, people today think there are no miracles anymore, is because mm -hmm. um, because we've come to a point where so much of what was called a miracle back then is now every day, you know, and so there's no more there. There's not you know most miracles aren't lightning bolts out of the blue. They're uh, um, you know they're uh, they're they're subtle. And, uh, um, you know, things that, uh, that like, uh, like people don't count the skill of a physician as a miracle, as miraculous anymore, but, it, but back then certainly it would have been considered mm -hmm. miraculous, but now it's considered every day. And, uh, um, you know, right. uh, um, my, uh, my family is full of those kinds of miracles. Um, uh, my mother was born with her brain exposed. And uh, um, and thanks to the uh, the skill of her uh, of her doctor, they were able to put everything back in place and close her skull up, and and uh, um, and she uh, obviously survived without uh, without damage. Um, my uh, my youngest brother um, in utero was uh, was exposed to uh, 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 what's the stuff called gamma gamma globulin, which is the curative for uh, for one of the hepatitises. And uh, um, and both the hepatitis and my father was uh, uh, was given an accidental needle stick at a hospital um, from a from a, a diseased needle, and uh, uh, so he still has problems from that. But uh, um, but yeah, he was my my youngest brother in utero was exposed to hepatitis and gamma and the cure for it. And both of those should have killed him. And then on top of that, when we uh, we were on a uh, business trip. My father took us all to Hawaii. He had a, a conference he had to go to. And so we all went on the trip over my mother's appendix burst. And uh, so they rushed her straight from the ambulance or straight, straight from the, uh, from the uh, airplane straight to the hospital for surgery. And, uh, um, and that should have killed him. And now he is a, uh, a happy father and husband of uh, he's a father of two uh, adorable kids and an RN, and uh, oh. uh, you know so uh, so yeah, uh, there are miracles all over the place, and uh, uh, but uh, but we don't recognize them because we have these things that seem common and everyday to us. We don't recognize the 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 simple miracles. We're looking for bolts out of the blue, and. Uh, um, you know, not everything looks like a, looks like a bolt of lightning, but. Well, yeah, and as Glenda had said at the beginning of the conversation, she's reading a book about witches and 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 different mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and another book that was uh, entitled a, a Seance. Well, you know, if you look at it, 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 you know, too often I've found that people look at. At, at religion and spirituality as ways that were different and they try to cast out one as good and one as bad. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that if you cast the spell as a witch, that is not much different than speaking a prayer exactly. as a Christian, you know? Right. So, it, is so, the, exa that is and so, and if and if you're calling upon a seance to bring a a spirit and the, and to speak to a spirit, there's not much different than 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 praying to a saint or praying to the Blessed Mother or praying to Christ. 
to to find it's just a different way. I mean, so you exactly. could cast it as good and evil. It just depends on your intentions while you're going there, I believe. But the fact of the matter is that I think the vast majority of people believe in spirituality, believe in after death, believe that you can manifest and pray to God and pray to the spirits and, 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 and will things to come into reality. And I think that we have that in common. And if we're using it for love and goodness, that's great. Now, here's the other side of that coin. If I'm using something and I'm praying for something that I want really bad, let's say I'm praying for a job. Let's say another person's praying for that job. Well, if I get it, then my prayer was bad according to that other person who wanted it. You see what I mean? So, well, so exactly. you know, you're not praying for that person. We have a whole other conversation around that because <laughs> to me, that's you guys. To me, that's alignment. It's uh -huh. not bad or good. It's are you aligned with that? Even though maybe consciously you go, oh, I really want that job, um, you know, and you try for it, you don't get it. So you could either, you could do two things. You could make it bad and wrong or make that person bad or wrong, you know, or you could just say, you know what, I, I, there's something better for me. You know, mm -hmm. maybe I, I'm not in alignment with that job. Maybe there's things that I can't see that I don't know yet that when I get it, if I was to get that job, I'd be completely tortured. You know, right. so you For just sure. have to kind of raise your consciousness and go, okay, well, what's Glenda? Did anyone ever tell you you look like Kathy Lee Gifford? No, uh -uh. <laughs> I think you do. The first thing I saw, I was like, wow, she looks a lot like Kathy Lee. <laughs> okay, well, I'll and that's a compliment, that's you know. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. uh -oh. uh oh, we lost him. <laughs> I think it's still recording on our end. There you go. Yeah. You're a global badass goddess. I see that. That's right. That is okay. correct. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Well, I'm a prof professional singer songwriter. Um, and uh, and you know, he decided later after he became a minister that it was God. Um, Basically saying, okay, you think you want this, I'm going to give it to you, you know, and, uh, and it turned out to be this horrifying experience for him. And uh, uh, just like, uh, I can't even remember half the stuff, but it was like getting thrown up on having people, this was back when you could, you could smoke on an airplane. And, and so he'd get, you know, he had mm -hmm. a guy blowing uh, cigar smoke in his face and just all this, uh, all this awful, awful stuff. And, uh, um, Jeez. yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, sometimes we pray for something that we think we want and, uh, exactly. and we'll either, uh, we'll either get it or, or not. And if we get it, maybe it wasn't something that we were supposed to, uh, something that's good for us. And we were given it to, uh, to teach us a lesson, um, you know, and uh, sometimes we are not given it because it's not right for us. It's not part of the, yeah. part of the, uh, the, our better lives, um. You know, you uh, yeah. Anthony talked about uh, stuff the Bible says. The uh, the Bible says, uh, you know, who uh, who if his son asks him for uh, for a loaf of bread would give him a snake or something like that. I don't remember exactly. I'm really bad at remembering. Uh, um, no, would give him a stone. And uh, um, you know, and so uh, you know, so if God is a good God, then He's not going to give us bad things or things that are bad for us, but he might give us things to teach us lessons. <clears throat> but, uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, interesting yeah, the way you... I think what you're talking, I think what you're talking about is perspective. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, I think what's important and for, to support people in this, if you can find your way through that and really see your accountability, your responsibility inside of something, then you can, you know, and step back and, and just really absorb what's happening. I think to your point, Bill, you know, just to say, okay, that's ouch. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, this is not necessarily the direction or, you know, I needed to learn yeah. that lesson or whatever, but to, you know, pull out of the make wrong, beat up yourself, beat up other people, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think it yeah. makes a more powerful life, actually. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think see, there's yeah. a lot of lessons in that because if you really look at it and, and you think about 
the choices that we have to make mm -hmm. and the choices between doing right or doing wrong. I mean, right. so I, I often rely, I rely on my uh, relationship with Christ. And I think about it in my life, you know, Christ, when you're hungry, okay. Christ says that they say Christ went into the desert and was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he was yeah. out there, the devil came to him and said, if you're the son of God, why don't you turn that stone into a piece of bread? And that way you could have nourishment, right? And and Christ responds with scripture and says, well, you know, man does not live on bread alone, okay? Right. And so essentially what, what he's saying there is that not to steal and not to do things that you shouldn't do just because you're hungry, because the temptation will always come to us. Okay. Yeah. And then it, Christ is taken up to the top of the, uh, of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, then you need to throw yourself down to the, to the ground because it's said that, that God will rescue his son with a band of angels. And Christ comes back and says, well, listen, uh, it's real simple. It also, it, the scripture also says that thou shall not test the hand of God. Okay. Right. Uh, once again, answering with scriptures. And then Christ is then uh, presented and, and brought to the top of the mountain. The devil says to him, hey, listen, I could give you this whole world if you shall bow right before me and you could have uh, control of everything. And, and Christ responds once again with scripture and says, well, thou shall not put uh, I, uh, any God before me. And right. so essentially, when you look at these different things, you could say to yourself, okay, um, what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean in my life? Well, what it means is it means don't steal. Okay, so even when you're hungry, don't do the wrong thing. It means don't test the hand of God and, and do drugs or, or abuse alcohol or abuse yourself or do the wrong thing. Because if you're doing the wrong thing, you're not going to be saved. Okay, and it's saying, look, don't put your job or the per your spouse or or anything else ahead of doing what's right because no matter what you do if you put those things ahead of doing what's right in the eyes of humanity in the eyes of god and what's righteous then it's never going to work out for you and i think that if you detach the notions of christianity that all people can believe in these basic premises without necessarily you know without necessarily having to get biblical because I think that these are items that we all can believe in and agree upon. Well, you're you're kind of talking about the uh, the Jefferson Bible, um, which uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, cut up his Bible and took out all the references to the supernatural, to uh, uh, to miracles, and and uh, um, you know, and, uh, and 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 a God who interacts with humanity, and uh, ended up with a uh, a book uh, on morals and ethics. And uh, um, that was actually given out to uh, up until uh, I think the start of the last century. Uh, that was given out to new uh, to new members of Congress, which could probably be a oh, thing wow. that should be done now, because uh, <laughs> I think a lot yes. of uh, a Some lot of uh, our representatives uh, don't uh, don't uh, uh, aren't acting as ethically and morally as they could be. But uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, but uh, um, but yeah, but hey, I wanted to get into because um, there there's something that's uh, um, you know the way that the that the show the guests get booked on uh, on the show is kind of random, and uh, um, and you know it's like I like to think of it as the Holy Spirit interfering with uh, with who gets booked when on the show, but uh, um, you know some people just call it chance, some people call it karma, whatever, um, but. Uh, um, Anthony, you were in a fire, or or you got burned some uh, somehow, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and Glenda, tell us the name of your book. Uh, it's called Courage: um, Find Your Fire and Ignite Action in Your Life. Is my first book, and then I just I'm just finishing up right now yep. with um, a grimoire of lost lore. It's a okay. combination of. Um, drawings and my and storytelling. So cool. Uh, well, I want to focus right yeah. now on yeah. the on the first one on uh, um, yeah, you know, you know, the, mm -hmm. the on courage because it's mm -hmm. like it, I found it funny to find your fire and ignite. And here I've got this other guest, and I've also been uh, been in a fire. Um, 
Mm. I was in an industrial accident, uh, wow, coming up on 30 years now um, ago. And wow. uh, um, yeah, um, and uh, I was uh, um, I was processing these uh, stainless steel uh, speaker grills. And uh, um, and the way we did it was we dipped them in turpentine and stuck them over an open flame. And, uh, um, and the gloves I was wearing caught fire and melted into my hands. And it was really yes. terrible and, and gross. Um, I, I had a lot to deal with for a long time after that. But Anthony, uh, yeah. tell us uh, tell us your story. Uh, what uh, what happened to you? Well, on Halloween Day, 1987, I was set on fire by a friend of mine in my garage who it wow. was it was not he didn't think that he flicked a match at, at my leg and it just you know, and it set my my pants on fire. And um, and I was burned over 87 percent of my body, third degree burns Wow! Uh, from my neck, uh, from my neck up, you know, to my ankles. I lost my left hand. I was oh, taken by life flight uh, uh, to, by helicopter to Pittsburgh, uh, which was about an hour from my home. The medical staff said if I live for a day, I would die in three days. If I live for three days, I would die of, in three weeks of infection. Uh, true mm -hmm. to the story, I had my last rites given to me three times. Um, at the end of three weeks, they said that there was no more they could do. My heart rate was 189 beats a minute. My temperature was 106. My blood pressure was 49 over 20. They quit giving me medicine and started giving me uh, comfort. And my parents, uh, and there was a vigil outside my room. My parents put ice on my ankles and my wrists and my neck. Uh, a little old lady came and, and anointed me with this oil from Jerusalem and, and, or, and sat in front of my, my bed um, and then hugged my mother and said I would be okay the next day, even though they said I wouldn't make it through the night. Right. Uh, my cousin, Eugene Ranieri, sent a pink uh, Kleenex that was blessed uh, with holy oil and said if they rubbed it on my face, I would be healed. They rubbed that on my face that night. The next morning, without any medical intervention, my temperature went away, my heart rate stabilized, and my blood pressure was normal. Uh, wow. Two weeks later, I was back on my feet walking, albeit you know barely able to move with a trail of blood behind me. Sure. I was out of the hospital uh, a couple of months later, and, um, and three years later, I was back on the football field. Uh, six years later, I was a starting outside linebacker for my high school football team where I led the team in sacks, uh, quarterback sacks, and uh, was a pretty good player. Uh, today, I'm a sports agent. Uh, I'm a CPA. I'm an NFL agent, uh, father of two, and, uh, and, and a living testimony that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, no matter how bad you're hit, you could survive against all odds. And, um, and that's the name of my book, Against All Odds, a story of faith, courage, and never giving up, uh, which really tells this story in dramatic detail, in a cinematic view, that is, uh, it's like an, a story that it, no one's told a story like this before, because it talks about all of the details of coming through that and, and coming back and, and having a normal life. So literally, it's, uh, coming it's, through a, the fire. it's a pretty interesting tell. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I only got a I only got a brush of that uh, by comparison uh, with uh, with mine. I mean, I had a lot to go through, but uh, yeah, there wasn't a point at which anybody thought I was about to die. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just remarkable. Uh, you know, um, it's it's amazing what you went through too, and you know the 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 pains of being burned are, are like no other. And yeah. uh, if you had to go through the dressing changes and the debreeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the graft operations and everything and the like, then I'm sure that you understand. Yeah. Um, I'm no better than any other person on the planet. We all face no. our own adversity and we all go mm -hmm. through our trials and tribulations. Some uh, psychological differences or, or some issues that we go through are more traumatic than physical. So, yeah. you know, my story is one that you can really see because it, it's physical and there's scarring to it. But I hope that it serves as an example for everybody, uh, no matter if you're dealing with drug or alcohol abuse, if you're dealing with an abusive relationship or just trying to move on with your life. Uh, if you have self-imposed doubts or, or, or things that you know people say that you cannot do, 
I hope my story in the physical shows you that, you know, look, everything I've been through, if, if you, uh, if you, if you're graced by the love of God and you just keep on persisting and believing that, uh, your life is that there's going to be better days ahead and the sun will come up tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. Um, yeah, Glenda, um, tell us a little bit about courage. Well, courage is, um, it kind of started, um, a few years back. Um, I was standing in my kitchen and a girlfriend of mine goes, well, you're a badass goddess. And I was like, what? And the, and I, the first thing I thought was, oh no, no, no. You know, like how we all do. Oh, I'm not that. Um, <laughs> and I thought, you know, I need to acknowledge and honor someone that has given me a compliment. And then I, I kind of went off on like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And I decided to redefine what badass means. So beautiful, mm -hmm. accessible, daring, um, y you know, looking at all those different things inside an acronym. And, um, and then you can fill in your own space. Uh, <laughs> and um, sassy, <laughs> savvy, <laughs> sexy, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> so I, so I started to redefine that. And then inside of that, I, um, I started taking that journey and creating my own podcasts and a variety of other things. That, and I decided, you know, I wonder if I have something of value to share. And I sat with that. I was on the East coast for a minute because I'm a professional musician and I was going back and forth working with my, my music partner. And, um, and I thought, you know what, how hard can it be to write a book? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I went, oh, okay. Um, cause I have yeah, a friend that like that... has been writing a book for like 10 years and I'm like, come on, that's ridiculous. You know, it's not like, a you know, some deep historical piece. So uh -huh. I, um, I thought I'm going to make an outline. So I made an outline and I thought, okay, this is what's, what's a value, clarity, courage, confidence, commitment, and community. And those were the, the key things that I based the book on. And this, this is what, how I had triumphs and trials and how I overcame them through clarity, courage, confidence, commitment, and community. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write about that. Just my experience, uh, my version. And, um, and then I told stories with it. Like, this is what happened. This is how I got through it. And then it's kind of like a little workbook. So then people can actually go in there. Okay. And think about that, you know, question themselves and then write things down. So that's, that's kind of how it all started. And um, yeah, so I just hope it supports people, you know, for their own journey. Cool. Yeah, I'm finding yeah. out about how, uh, how easy, how easy it is to write a book myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> having had so many authors on the show, uh, um, and several yeah. of them telling me you need to write your book. And so I'm writing my book. I, I have it open on my other uh, my other screen right here, and uh, the, nice. the work so far. And I mean, I'm up to 46 pages, but the more I write, the longer it gets. So, <laughs> of course. So like, course. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think when you're writing a book, you have to you have to write the book. If you want to write a book that's 50,000 words, mm -hmm. you have to write a 75,000 word book. Yeah. And then you have to cram it down into 50,000 words, okay? <laughs> because the more that, the longer you write it, you're going to have some good things in there. And then the yeah. more you squeeze it down and think of and eliminate the unnecessary, the better it becomes. Now, yeah. the other side of that, and then once you write it to 50,000 words, you're not done, okay? <laughs> then you have to go through and rewrite it again. Right. Okay. And when you, re you have to rewrite it, reword it, make sure that it's in the proper sequence, make sure that you're not being bitter or negative or, and then you have to change it and you have to re and if you don't want to make it really good, you have to take that full version manuscript and you have to write it like five times. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> some of them, some people say to do oh, it yeah. 10 times. Okay? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and then yeah. once you get through it, now it's the, now it has the message that you want, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, I think to your point, Anthony, really, it's not about the words. It's not about how many words you should be doing or what you, you know, it's really about what, 
what is the content? What is the intention? What do you want to share with somebody? And then make an outline. If you make an outline, then, you, then you'll stay within each thing and you can see how it flows and see where the journey right. takes you and that type of thing, depending on what kind of book it is. I mean, it's obviously yeah. different for everybody, but, um, but yeah, that to me, that's what really helped me stay focused because I gave myself, you know, the five C's to stay inside of, because that's what it took for me to have things happen. And I know, I noticed a lot of times with, um, gals for sure, um, you know, just getting something done was challenging. So, you know, and I always, always say, well, you've got to have clarity to start with. That has to be your foundation. If you don't know what you're about or what you want to do, how do you, how do you have the courage to do anything? You don't, you know, you don't have that because you don't know what you're doing, you know? So it's like, yeah, you got to have that. So that's what really helped me uh, making sure I had an outline and then, then put the, the information inside each, each chapter. So inside each chapter, I had, I had a goal and a date, like I was going to do a chapter a day. And inside that chapter was only going to talk about clarity. And then we're only going to talk about courage in the next chapter. And then we're only going to talk about confidence. That, so that's how I did it. And I felt that that really helped me and it really created a flow and it was a little bit easier. And yes, to your point, Anthony, yes, you have to keep going back over it and going, oh my God, who learned spelling? You know, it's like <laughs> grammar. Ah. So, yeah, good I mean, and what I found in, the, in, in writing was that I had a lot of unresolved past trauma. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, coming through my accident and going through the healing process, the physical rehabilitation process and getting incorporated in the school and, and trying to just be normal and have yeah. not people not look at me like the disabled kid. And I had to have this body armor on where I was just like acting like I was infallible. And 30 years later now, when I'm writing in the book, I realized I started to think about my parents' divorce. And how that affected me and wow. and the beauty of them coming together. Yeah. And instead of now thinking about resentment and the fact that we were separate, I start to now forgive and feel thankful for the way that they came for me. And, and I started to process my own emotions different. And I spent hours crying. And, and you know what? Then when I went back through my book, I, I was able to see my pain. Yeah. And, you know, and I was able to now rework my pain into a point where it was like, okay. And so then the most beautiful thing happened about uh, four or five months ago. I sat down, I blamed my dad's wife, okay, his second wife, Roseanne, for my parents splitting up. And that wasn't fair. And I held on to that for so long. And I finally had a set down with my dad and his wife. And I told him that I'm sorry for that. And I told them that I, and they said, I understand. And I said, I forgive you and I love you. And I want to have a good relationship with you. And it has been a beautiful healing. That was something that went on since I was 12. Wow. So writing this book really allowed me to, to, and, and like really explore these emotions in myself and, and to, and to forgive and, and to overcome in a way that I didn't even think was possible, you know? Powerful. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, working through uh, working through those issues. Uh, it, it took me a long time to work through uh, through the issues with my uh, my fire and with a uh, uh, a breakup uh, that I had as well. Um, yeah, we all have uh, we all have these traumas uh, in our lives, uh, you know, and we can only compare them to our own traumas. Um, you know, comparing them to to someone else's isn't fair. I mean. Uh, you know, uh, you know, saying, uh, saying, oh, you know, because it was just my hands that it's different from, I mean, I still have both of them, um, you know, so, uh, so it couldn't have been as bad as, uh, as it was for Anthony, but that's not fair to, to either one of us, um, you know, and, yeah. uh, and somebody may, uh, you know, say, oh, well, my, my parents' divorce was worse than your parents' divorce or, or, or any of these uh, number of things. And we have to remember that it's not fair to compare to other people. Um, 
you know, we can only compare exactly. it to ourselves, to what we know. And, uh, uh, you know, what's the worst thing that ever happened in your life? Well, that's the worst thing that ever happened in your life. And that's pretty bad. And you have to work through that and uh, and come to the love and understanding that uh, um, that we need uh, in this world to uh, to have a happy life. <clears throat> so, uh, but, uh, um, but oh, yeah, I, and, and go ahead. And dealing with burn survivors mm -hmm. in, in particular, you know, I, it's it's interesting because. You know, and people who are quadriplegics and other people who have physical uh, issues that you can see. See, the difference is, imagine going through your life and everywhere you go and everyone you meet, the first thing they see before you even open your mouth is the worst thing that ever happened to you. Think about that. You know, think about like the worst thing that ever happened to you. And now you're just wearing it. Okay. Yeah. And so the first impression before anyone even knows you, hears you. And then, and then some people think, you know, you're scary because you have scars or you're, you're mad, you're angry because you lost. And that's their impression just because that's what they see visually. Right. And the way that Hollywood depicts evil is always through someone melted or burned or deformed or something else. So there's this connection between burns and bad. Right. Yeah. You it's know? a prejudice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really hard. It's something that people don't even realize, but it's really hard to overcome sometimes when, when that's the first thing. Then if you're excited, I'm Italian, so I get excited. <laughs> I'm loud, all this and that. Now, all of a sudden, people are like, oh, wait a second. They're, they're a little bit I'm like, hold on. This is everyone in my family. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm this way. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's, there are certain prejudices in there. And, and being able to deal with that and overcome. But, you know, it's it's life is an interesting thing. We go through things and, you know, people say, well, why are you still going through this? Or why are you still talking about this? Or why are you still hurt from this? Well, I'm not exactly sure. You know what I mean? It's just, I'm living, I'm being the best human I can be. And God willing, one day, uh, you know, you're able to, it's a real life experience, you know? And so, yeah, that, that's that. Yeah. How do, Anthony, how do you think it makes um, it, you're having your experience, how is it that has made you a better person or changed you in some way? Well, I mean, I, I have, uh, I'm really good when we're dealing with uh, conflict or or trying to get through a hard time. Yeah, I have incredible endurance. Okay, wow. in incredible endurance. So if I'm in if I'm in negotiating with somebody and there's two sides, I'm on one side and the other people on the other side. I have in you. I'm the last person you want to be on the other side of that <laughs> because I have unbelievable endurance i'm very thoughtful and i just can go and go nothing compares to having to go through 43 surgeries 134 blood transfusions and fight so i'm able to see the end of it and keep on fighting well there's a downside to that too the downside to that is you know is sometimes you fight too hard you know and sometimes that that could there could be it's not necessary you know and and there's not and 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 there's damage done by going at it that way. So uh, you have to learn to temper things. But if you're ever in a situation where you need somebody to advocate for you, and, and you know, look, I'm your guy. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get through it. Yeah, call me up. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's really awesome. No, I can yeah. I can understand some of uh, some of that because. Uh, um, my my major struggles these days are with uh, ADD and uh, major depression, um, you know, and uh, and when those things are out of whack, you know, when they're when they're not working uh, well, then then things can get pretty bad. Um, you know, I can I can ruminate over uh, over uh, things that have happened to me. I can uh, um, I can just get into a hole and 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 hide from the world or try to anyway. Uh, but uh, um, you know, as long as as long as I can 
get things working right, then I can work on a problem forever. You know, and, uh, you know, hmm. getting that endurance that you're talking about, uh, Anthony, and, uh, um, you know, being able to uh, to keep going after the problem and working it over and over again in my brain. And, uh, um, you know, and uh, but, uh, um, you know, and then, of course, on the other side, uh, the ADD side, then I'm always curious about uh, about new things and always learning and uh, um you know, so uh, so yeah, so it's again we're we're back, uh, Glenda, to uh, to your perspective and alignment. Um, you know, it depends on uh, you know on how you look at the issues you have in life, the opportunities for uh, for improvement, as uh, as my old mentor liked to uh, to call problems. Um, you know, and then you can uh, and, and then you can deal with it in the right way. And uh, and use yeah. your what you thought were weaknesses as strengths. Yeah, I think we, you know, uh, to add to that, I think what's missing these days in society, I, I can I see a lot of people just not wanting to think about other people. Mm -hmm. Like there's, we're all so like it's all here. It's all about me. How I can move in and out of traffic really fast. <laughs> You know, it's like the, I was watching that last night driving, driving home and I saw people just moving in and out of traffic just really fast. No blinkers, no nothing. And it was like, where are you going? Like, where are you getting to? Mm -hmm. Like, it's ridiculous. You know, um, I'm sure everybody has their situation, but, but it was dangerous. It was actually dangerous for the rest of us on the road. And so, you know, what is that? Like, what is that not being mindful, not being conscious of others around you that you're so you absorbed <laughs> with you that you have to move in and out of traffic, you know, I mean, and it was raining. I was like, Oh my God, you know, and it's California. So we're not used to rain. <laughs> I'm from Oregon. So, you know, I know how to handle rain, but that, I was like, Oh no, just one little mistake. and That's it for the rest of us, you know? So I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of checked out mindless, you know, people out there and it's, and it's very sad. And I think if we could just start taking care of ourselves in healthy ways and, and, and helping each other yeah. and realizing that we're all connected. I think he would stop being so rude and well, ridiculous. What I've found <laughs> is that when, um, when I'm having trouble with like, uh, the depression, um, it's because I've turned inward. If I can turn myself yeah. outward and start being concerned with other people, you know, uh, you know, mm, helping mm. them, you know, going and volunteering at a soup kitchen or something and, and, and being concerned yeah. with the, with the lives of other people, then it turns the whole thing yeah. around. And, uh, and so all the, all the difficulty people are having, you know, it's like, oh, woe is me or, oh, I'm late or, oh, this, oh, that, if they could turn themselves right. outward and, uh, and be concerned about the lives around them they'd find that all that would go away. Yeah. That's a well, great point. It, yeah. And, and I believe that depression can be linked to disappointments from the past. Mm. And I think anxiety could be linked to uh, worry about the future. And mm. if you focus on your present situation Mm -hmm. Then in doing the best you can in your moment and making everything the best you can and you and you understand that what happened happened. OK, yeah. now we need to let it go. What happened over there? And yeah. now we need to do the best we can for today so that the future is better. Now, all of a sudden, you can walk out of that depression and you can overcome a lot more than if you sit there and dwell on something that happened a year ago, six months ago or in your childhood or, or wherever Absolutely. you can't. You know, yeah. absolutely. You can't live 100%. there. No. Yeah, absolutely. No, but uh, and, and get the yeah. tools. You know, if you can't, if you can't ha if you can't pull yourself out, reach out. Get some tools. Get yeah. some. Have a conversation with somebody. Oh yeah. You know, and it, and it, I think Bill, to your point, it's like it's you know you got to have a, a balance. You got to look within, mm -hmm. but you don't need to dwell within. 
there you, you know, go. There and you like, go. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, right. Like kind of look within and go, oh, okay, this is what's going on. And then, Hey, I'm feeling really down right now. Let me get, you know, let me get in a conversation. Let me go help somebody, you know, yeah. Yeah, get the, get the so professional. The help question I always ask people: <laughs> Let let me ask you this, Bill. Okay. If you had a disagreement with somebody, are you a grudge holder? Like, mm -hmm. if someone did something, are you a grudge holder? I, I, now, I'm not yeah. asking you that. That's a that's a rhetorical question. Okay. But here's my <laughs> point: If you there are two types of people. If you're a grudge holder, mm -hmm. chances are you're going to be susceptible to depression. Yeah. Because if, but if you are not a grudge holder, if we could be on the basketball court or in the playground and we get, and we're playing something and there's an argument that ensues and it goes bad for a minute. Okay. If you're not a grudge holder and you could get up and you could get on to that, past that game. And the next time we're teammates, chances are, you're not going to be the person that hangs on to depression. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so I, I think that being a grudge holder also means that you're probably susceptible to depression. You know, I believe that. Yeah, you, know, you got to be able to let it go. Well, I would, yeah, I would say for me, it's the other way around, uh, because uh, we we have found that uh, that my depression is chemically based, um, and so I, mm -hmm. my brain would always find something to to be depressed about. But uh, um, mm. but it's because of the depression that I have to work on grudge holding that, uh, um, that, uh, that I can hold a grudge because the depression is, um, one of the, one of the big things for me is, uh, what's called rumination, which basically is a, a reworking and over and over and over and over again, and like an endless cycle of some past event. Um, you know, and, uh, um, and it's, it's one, it's one of the aspects of depression that I really have a big problem with. But, uh, um, but of course I've gotten professional help. I take medication and, uh, um, you know, and things are, uh, things are pretty good. We're at a, we're at a pretty good place good now, for you. but, uh, um, but yeah, I, and, and I definitely have to work on the grudge holding because, uh, it's, you know, it's not good. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a bad thing. Things happen. It probably isn't what you think it was. And, you know, you should just, you know, move on, uh, um, you know, uh, what was it? I got I got into something on a on a freeway in Southern California, where I used to live, and uh, somebody uh, somebody cut me off, and and I got really mad at them, and uh, um, and uh, I I almost immediately had to pull off the road because uh, um, because I was going to or off the freeway because I was going to uh, to a psych appointment. And, uh, I get there and, and, uh, and the, uh, um, the therapist could tell, you know, that I was upset and he's like, what was it? And I told him what happened. He's like, that guy doesn't, didn't do it to you on purpose. It wasn't on you. It wasn't because of you. And he's probably not thinking about you now. So why should you be thinking about him? You know, exactly. and, uh, exactly. uh you know, it's like, um, you know, and I came to came to realize why am I letting other people control my brain space? You know that my brain is valuable yes. real estate. I only have so much of it, and uh, um, and I shouldn't be thinking about things that don't really matter that much. Um, you know, things that happened in the past. Okay, you know what? Every now and again, it's nice to remember things in the past, and uh, and hopefully they're good memories. But, uh, um, but yeah, you know, it's like, you need to, you need to put them in their place and, uh, and not just have all the clutter all over your brain. Um, you know, cause, exactly. uh, cause there are new well, things. Well, new the other, the, the contrary to that, to being a grudge holder in my mind is, are you envious? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you envious of what you perceive that other people's lives are? Okay. Hmm. Because if you're envious of others, then that causes anxiety that you're not good enough. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is you are good enough. And a lot of what you see from people when you see their life on social media or where they house that they live, it's not perfect. It's a perception issue. So I think that this idea of holding a grudge or lack of forgiveness and having envy towards other people 
or other circumstances or just wanting something that you never got, having being envious. I think that if you can conquer these two things, that you end up eliminating a lot of the depression and a lot of the anxiety in your life. And you just focus on being the best you that you can be. I think that is the key to being happy. And it's, yeah. uh, and it's, it's much easier said than done. Oh yeah. No, it, it is much easier said than done. Um, but yeah, no, I can, I can totally understand, uh, understand that. Um, God bless, bless you. you. Thank you. Thank bless you. you. And, uh, yeah, don't, 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 sneeze, don't sneeze on us. <laughs> <laughs> no fear of it. <laughs> Catch a computer virus. But yeah, uh, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, that, uh, um, you know, that much of, uh, much of what we, uh, we call depression is just, uh, is just a, a matter of being envious and, uh, and holding grudges against people. You know, it's, uh, for sure. Um, you know, and, uh, and ultimately and, you just yeah. hurt yourself. You're just hurting yourself mm -hmm. and not yeah. anybody else. Yeah. So. It, it's totally a, a turning inward of, uh, of all the, the bad feelings that you have for other people and it needs to be worked through. Um, that's why it's a good thing yeah. to have, uh, to have professional help available. So absolutely. <laughs> I have my appointment on Monday. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, yeah, and you've yeah. got to be careful too, because I've seen people get on medication that wasn't right for them and they change. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that backfires back. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah. It, it totally you know, can. It totally I saw can. somebody get on Adderall and, mm -hmm. and antidepressants and Adderall and become a completely different human being. Like, wow. Oh wow. You know, I've seen it happen, you know, so yeah. You got to be real careful because you know mm -hmm. it, medicine. Those types of medicines change your pituitary gland, the way that your brain mm -hmm. is operating, and um, yeah, sure, definitely, you, you definitely want to not have depression, but a lot of it can be uh, handled through diet, exercise, uh, you know, yeah. meditation, and and working mm -hmm. on yourself too. I mean, be very careful with that kind of medicine. I, I'm, I have oh, some yeah, fear for, sure. for it actually. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we had to do quite a bit to uh, to find the right set of uh, right set of meds, um, including uh, my uh, my ther uh, my uh, not my therapist, but my uh, my psych doctor. Um, she even had us had me do uh, a genetic test. It was really kind of cool. They they go through and they uh, and they look and they come up with a list a short list of medications that should work well with your genetic makeup. And, uh, um, and so we were able to go through and say, okay, this is right. This is wrong. This doesn't work at all. And, uh, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's amazing what you can find if you, when you get the right person, um, when you get the right help, hmm. but, uh, um, but yeah. yeah, um, yeah, we go through, uh, through that every three months. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, um, but yeah, well, um, I have no idea how long we've been talking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, but I, I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good stopping point. Um, you know, as, uh, as I say at the end of the, uh, of the, of the closing credits, if you need help with a, with a mental issue, if you're having, you know, thought, thoughts of suicide or having some kind of mental crisis, um, you can call 988 here in the U S and, uh, um, and get some help. Um, and, uh, that'll all be at the end of the closing credits as well. So, uh, um, you know, get, get the help you need and, uh, um, you know, and get started on the path of being, uh, being a good human. But, uh, um, but I'd like to thank you both for being on the show. It's been entertaining. Um, Glenda's book is courage, find your fire and ignite action in your life. And Anthony's book is against all odds. Um, I'll put links in the uh, in the description so people can find them, and uh, um, you know very easily. And uh, um, so go out and go and buy a book. Um, and I want to let people know that when they buy yes. a book, it alerts me, and then I'll plant a tree with a, a company cool. called One Tree Planted. Nice. So that's a great way to give back and help the environment. So that's awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So uh, so buy a book hey, and plant nice a tree. Meeting you, Glenda. Thank you, Anthony. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, and nice to meet you, Bill. Half uh, before uh, before we go, any I could uh, tell. 
before uh, before I close up, uh, any final words for the nice people? Well, just keep <laughs> fighting. You know, listen, life is not a. Uh, it's you're not on an elevator ride straight up. It's more like you're on uh, escalators going up and down, and ultimately reaching a place. And so. Don't let your highs get too high and don't you let your lows get too low and just keep on fighting the good fight because there's a beautiful day ahead of you. Yeah. And um, I love this quote. It's like, if, uh, if pain, um, pain is, uh, what is it? Pain is life. How did I say this? Um, let me just do this. Okay. In life, pain, there's pain uh, is certain, but suffering is optional. <laughs> Okay, I like that. In life, like pain that. is certain, but suffering is optional. Yeah. So. Yep. You have to dig Beautiful. in there. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, thank you both again. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, be careful out there. Remember to wash your hands and stay tuned for the ending credits. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. I'd like to thank our producer, my beloved mother, Eileen Hatch. I, of course, am your humble host. I'd also like to thank my special guests, Anthony Rosano, a severe burn survivor who is now an NFL agent and author of Against All Odds, a story of faith, courage, and never giving up. And Glenda Benavides, a Grammy-considered artist who has planted over 250 trees around the world. Support the show if you feel so led over on Patreon.com. We're known as Bald Spots Pro. Don't you dare miss YWL Online. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever fine podcasts are offered. Be sure to tune in next time when my special guests will be... Doug Lawrence, a certified international mentor focused on mental health and grief. And Kaylee Boisvert, an advocate for financial literacy and author of Make Money Your Thing, Ditch the Shame, and Design Your Dream Life. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. If you or someone you know need support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. That is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline here in the United States.